do it. Okay. So what's the uh, the name of this guy? Um, I want to say methane. It is um, it is methane, but if you answer that on a test right now, what would you get? No. Mm -mm. Covalent nomenclature. Oh, um, um, it's a car a carbon. Te uh, you got it. Tetra? Hydroxide. Or Tetra hydride. Hydride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. So carbon, carbon tetrahydride. So Jessica, you probably want to practice your covalent, yeah. <laughs> your covalent yeah. nomenclature. Yeah, SDSU hasn't um, hasn't said yet, but um, UCSD has been making indications, uh, at least behind the scenes, that they're probably going to go online. And I, that makes me sad because I I accepted their offer for the fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Congratulations, by the way, Steph. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if you can take more classes at community college, they're cheaper. You can always <laughs> do uh, yeah. like hold off for a quarter. So, yeah. um, okay, so anyways, molar masses. So this guy, carbon, has a molar mass of 12.01 mm -hmm. grams hydrogen. per mole, and our hydrogen... 1.008 times 4. Yeah, baby. Did you memorize these now? Yeah, I'm like... Yeah. These, are the, these are the idiotic <laughs> things... This is, these are the idiotic things that my brain remembers, you guys. I, I don't know how to spell words that I literally could spell five seconds ago, but I can't forget the molar masses of elements. So, um, Cool. So our overall molar mass for this guy, I think, is 16.043? Whatever. Yeah. Somewhere around there, right? So looking at the molar mass for this molecule, right, Let's compare it to the molar mass of iodine. Okay. Move it to the left, like okay. these. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so this is uh, molecular iodine, right? And our iodines each have a molar mass of 126.90. Yeah. And there's two of them, right? Yeah. So, overall, what's the molar mass of molecular iodine? I think it's 253.8? No. This is wrong. Two, five, Three point eight. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, right? So, just looking at how heavy this sucker is, right? Does it make sense why these guys would be more likely to condense than these guys? Mm -hmm. Right? So, it's, it's about size in terms of molecular size, but more importantly, it's about atomic weight, right? Does that make sense? So when you have something really heavy, those dispersion forces are going to become increasingly important, right? When you have something really light, right? Something really light can move around a lot more with less energy. Does that make sense? Think about it like a um, uh, pushing something really heavy up a hill, right? Um, that something that weighs a lot is going to take an incredible amount of energy to push up that hill, right? To move that thing. But something really light is really easy to move, even if it's in, so more heavy equals more dispersion. Absolutely, Alex. Um, so, so yeah, because um, your dispersion forces become, um, it, it becomes, heavier to move these guys around, right? And if it's harder to move these guys around, then it means that they're going to have more contact with each other, right? More contact with each other means dispersion forces become more at play. Does that kind of make sense, guys? Cool. 
And that'll lead us into um, next class when we start talking about um, gases, right? So we're going to go into, um, first we're going to be talking about gases in chapter 8. And then in chapter 9, we start talking about solutions. So looking at um, solid-liquid interactions. And then the last one will be looking at acids and bases, um, which are just a particular kind of solution, right? Um, but that's where we're headed with this stuff, okay? Questions? Helpful? Good, 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 good. Cool, well, have a good day.